Well, I have here another Victor Vitrola 50. This one would be very early 1922. It's mahogany. And uh, it illustrates what these tend to look like in as-found condition. This one is as-found in a flea market down south by a friend of mine not too long ago. And as you can see, it's in pretty good shape. Now, as I've said before about the 50s, these are a mix of veneer and hardwood. The sides on these, that's all hardwood, solid mahogany, while the top is veneer mahogany, so what you have to look out for is lifting along the edges, which this really doesn't have. A few little nicks and whatnot, but no lifting here. Nicely glued down still. It's not peeling, it's not lifting, there's no big chunks missing. And these little scratches and such like, don't worry about that. Those are just dry shellac that's been scratched, and that is fixable with the products of Cotton Cleanser. We'll make that look really nice. Another thing to watch out for, especially with these earlier models, is damage, and I've said this before, but I'll cover it again. Damage to this back panel. Now, if you are to flop this lid open without the lid stay on it to catch it when it's, you know, three quarters up like that, you can flop all the way back and put tremendous pressure on this back panel. These early models use a solid metal horn in there. So there's limited support on this panel, just the same as the front. It's just a couple of little blocks of wood in there and some glue holding it together. So that pressure of that lid flopping back can cause it to snap off, either right here or right here. And you'll see a lot of times very crude repairs to this. And when you snap that, it's a solid piece, like I said, a solid piece of mahogany. You snap that in half, you're going to have to disassemble the box to really get that back together properly. We're talking drilling dowels and gluing and probably a refinishing job when it's done. So you want to try to avoid all of that if you can avoid the machines that have that kind of damage. Unless you get them very cheap. You know, all of this, that'll, that'll go away. That's nothing. And this machine, another thing to look out for with the 50s, because these were a portable Victrola, they were intended as picnic phonographs. Take them out in the field, play them in the barnyard, whatever. And a lot of times, you will see damage down here, but not with this one. This one's pretty good shape. It's not all gouged out. So I'm going to figure this was probably used primarily indoors, which was not uncommon. These machines sounded so good that a lot of people just uh, didn't bother with a larger Victrola, and they uh, went with one of these as their house phonograph, something the Victor company really wasn't too pleased with. So... They only made these in 21 and 25, and then they went to the smaller black box models that, uh, well, not all of them were smaller. Things like the 260 and the 255 were huge, but they were a different shape, different style. I guess you could use those as whole phonograph, whole house phonographs too, but they lacked the, uh, the nice finished wood that these had. These look really good in a parlor or something like that. The 250 and the, two, the 260 and the 255, eh, not so much. Let's take a look here. Okay. And this is number 43,295. And as you can see, that is a full metal horn back there all the way around. Later on, this back panel became wood curved wooden piece in there and this was kind of like a half horn still metal but it's only half horn and the the later ones had better support for the back panel they could still be found damaged but they tended to split off more at the hinge damaging sometimes the lid sometimes the box sometimes both you never know okay and this one came with the Victrola number two which was a dealer option at the time these came originally from the factory with exhibitions but you can get a number two put on there very easily. It only took seconds for the dealer to swap it. A few dollars added to the price, which I'm sure the dealer was pleased with. And you had a small upgrade on your Victor Vitrola 50. There you go. We have these have a single spring motor, of course. I, in previous videos, I've covered those. Uh, this one, let's see, where's our handle? This one is turning, I believe. Turned it when it came in. Let's wind it up a little bit, see what we have. I'm sure it's full of clanks and rattles because this has not been serviced, I would guess, in probably 80 years.
See how dry the pole is? It's actually skipping a few feet. Oh, there it goes. Whoops. Let's put the brake on. The brake is holding. Wow, listen to that spring. <laughs> That's a dry spring. Oh, boy. Spins right off the springs, in, probably in good shape. No, I don't hear any clattering noises from the governor. That's good. So mechanically, it's intact. It just needs the service, you know, the greasing, the lubricating, the scrubbing and cleaning, which is straightforward stuff. There's no no repairs that need to be done to the motor. Pretty good sound to it considering it has no lubrication. Except what you heard when I wound it up, all oh, the squeaking and clattering. <laughs> That's normal. It's been dry a long time. But we don't have a broken spring and it looks like uh, it's got good power. I'll know more when I open the spring barrel up and uh, take a look at the spring. If it's all limp and like a limp noodle, well, that's no good. We will replace it, if needed, with a new one. They are available for these. I think you can see the lid's pretty good under there. We don't have a, any big needle gouge spots. We've got little ones over here. That is from leaving the needle on the reproducer, leaving the reproducer in the up position and trying to close the lid on it. And forgetting. And you end up stabbing the lid. Looks like it's happened there 30 or 40 times. But there's no hole. I've seen them so bad that it was actually holes. Oops, we've pixelated. It was actually holes uh, put in it. Yeah, that's better. No thumps and rattles yet. That's pretty good. Now we see the, the handle. These handles come off, by the way. Let's see if that's loose. Oh, it is. It is loose. Let me take that off right now. Another indication it was probably used inside a home. Well, at least they didn't lose the handle. I have had them come to me without handles because using them inside a home on a fancy little table, they took the handles off, they didn't need it. They weren't moving the machine around. And what happens then is the handle gets lost. And that's all it is. Oops, what did I drop? Oh, a little piece of metal. I think there was a screw, a washer on there and it broke. Not a big deal. I have spares. But it has been on there for a while. Still spinning. These are usually good for a couple plays. Even with a new spring. It's, it's the same motor essentially as the tabletop Victor Vitrola IV had. What they did in 1921 in the rush to develop a portable phonograph for the market that was demanding it. They built a box around the Victor Vitrola IV. Just to uh, use the same motor and crank and all the things and uh, built the new box around it. And it was very successful. These were highly popular machines in their time. Uh, the Victor Vitrola 50, it, the 50 actually stands for the price. It was $50 in 1921, which is something like 600 and I guess 650 or something like that today. A lot of money. None of these machines were inexpensive, no matter what size they were. And you can see here... Looks like somebody's replaced the knob. That's Bakelite maybe, or Lucite, or I don't know what that is, but uh, it's more reminiscent to HMV cranks than it is one on a Victor, but uh, it's the right size. It has to be the right size of these to fit under the lid there properly, as this one did. Take that back off of there. Don't want it to hook on something and make a mess. No missing screws, no splits, no holes, no worm damage. Yeah, I picked up a large ta a large floor model the other day. So many worm holes in that thing, I'm surprised it has structural integrity yet. And this is the lid stay I was talking about. 
That always has to be connected. Never disconnect that. Unless you're taking the machine entirely apart, then you have to. But that stops your lid from flopping all the way back. And obviously, these are not the kind of lid you close while trying to play a record. <laughs> because the, the lid itself actually functions as part of the horn on these 50s. You see that contoured piece of wood in there? Down in the back. This lid is actually directing the sound. This is part of your horn. So don't try to play it with the lid down, obviously, or the lid all the way back. It's not meant to work that way. Huh, looks like we're winding down. Or not. No, she's going pretty good. I thought there would be a nice, big, loud rumble in there, but uh, it rumbled on winding, not on unwinding. I guess it's so dry, there really isn't anything in there to stick anymore. There's nothing. It's just steel on steel. Even the, the last bit of sticky grease, old dry grease, must be gone, turned to powder in there. But that's the next project. Victor Retrola 50. I wonder if this has a patent sticker on it. So you know what we're going to do? Whoops. Let me put you down for a second here. Well, I see if I can get that center screw off the turntable. We can check for a patent. Oh, it's loose. Huh. The turntable screw is loose. Okay. This is the turntable screw. And that, oh, there is one. Okay. Let's take a look. January 1922. These patent date stickers, they're usually within a few months of the machine's actual construction. They were constantly updating them. So if you see one that says, it says 1922, it likely is. Like I said, this is early 1922, but it's serial number. But... Victrola 50, notice. The Victor Ducking Machine Company. And there's something else about this. This machine uses this style of clip to hold down the reproducer, to fold the reproducer down. I'll, I'll demonstrate that. Let me get the reproducer on there. And you'll see what I mean. Come on. Oh, she likes to stick. Let's see what's holding that up. Oh, the gasket is a mess, but that's all right. Part of rebuilding the reproducer is changing the gasket. The ice little gasket, okay. Now, here we go. There you go. They only used this get this type of clip. I, I think it was maybe four or five months. Wasn't popular. Didn't work as well as a larger one, which would go over there. Don't really know why they chose to do this. Maybe use less metal or I don't know. I mean, it seems to work. But it is a little awkward to find sometimes, you know, when you're groping around to put it in there. And uh, it might, over time, cause scratches on the, rep on the reproducer itself. Well, the other one just clips right around, right around there. Oh, looks like it's done turning. Oh, look at the dust bunnies under there. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that has not been off in a very, very long time. See all the dust and pet hair and whatever is down in there. All of that will be cleaned. But there you go. There's a look at uh, the next project.